Good afternoon everyone. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to triple your tomato yields with very little effort. The tomatoes that I performed this trick on this year fruited with ridiculous yields, sometimes yielding so much fruit that it stunted the growth of the tomato plant or weighed the plant down so heavily that limbs snapped. This method is so effective when done properly that even heirloom tomatoes with notoriously stingy yields like Brandywine Pink set copious amounts of tomatoes. The only tool you will need for this trick is a simple electric toothbrush. I purchased the most inexpensive electric toothbrush I could find last year to perform this trick, but you know what? It's actually a really good toothbrush. It's so good that I've been using it twice a day every day for myself for the past year, and I just keep a spare head for my tomato flowers. If you're curious the make and model of this toothbrush, I'll link to it in my Amazon storefront under garden accessories in the video description, so check it out. At the time of filming this video, the toothbrush is only $21, which is an incredible deal for a brush this good in my opinion. Tomatoes are naturally self-fertile plants. What that means is that a single tomato plant can pollinate itself and grow fruit in complete isolation. It does not require cross-pollination from another variety. Some self-fertile plants, like plants in the cucurbit family, like watermelons, cucumbers, and squashes, have separate male and female flowers, requiring a pollinator to fly from male flower to female flower for pollination. Tomatoes are not like that. The tomato flower is self-contained and contains both male and female parts. Because of this, tomato flowers are pollinated by vibration. Tomato pollen is actually very low in carbohydrate content, so the pollen is low quality food for pollinators like our friendly honeybee. Bees prefer complex sources of carbohydrate like the pollen they get from sunflowers, clover, blueberries, and other popular honey types that we see advertised in stores. That's why you've never seen tomato honey sold on store shelves. While the occasional bee may find its way to a tomato flower, it's on the absolute bottom of its menu. So, when it comes to natural tomato pollination, most of the tomatoes that set fruit on your plants are actually pollinated by the wind. The wind rattles the pollen around inside the flower, shakes the male pollen all over the female parts, and a tomato will form. If pollination is inadequate, the flower will shrivel up, dry up, and drop to the ground. So if you've ever seen dried up tomato flowers littered all over your ground, it's because those tomato flowers were not properly pollinated. While most of the fruits on your tomato plant are pollinated by wind, the wind doesn't do a great job of pollinating all the time. While tomato varieties that set small fruits like cherry tomatoes and early types that grow two to three ounce tomatoes are pollinated easily, large slicers and beef steaks don't set well with wind pollination. Left to Mother Nature alone, the majority of the flowers on these tomato types will not pollinate and will shrivel up and die off. Hand pollination will greatly increase fruit set on all tomatoes, especially the larger types. While there are many methods of hand pollination, from simply shaking the vines and flowers to simulate the wind, or taking blush brushes and moving pollen from flower to flower, the absolute best way I've found to set tomato fruits is to vibrate the flowers for three to five seconds with an electric toothbrush. The vibrations of the toothbrush simulate a bee buzzing around in the flower, and the fruit set that you will get with this method is unnaturally high, sometimes bordering on 100%. It's that effective. So let's show you all how to do this. And here I have a nice cluster of tomato flowers, so I'm going to show you how to use the electric toothbrush to hand pollinate them. What I'm going to do is I'm going to vibrate each flower for three to five seconds with the electric toothbrush on the highest setting and I'm going to support the flowers underneath my fingers so I don't accidentally knock the flowers off with the toothbrush. And I just got a nice burst of pollen out of that. You can see the pollen all over my fingers right here. When you see pollen fly out of the flower like that, that almost certainly means that that flower is going to pollinate and it is going to yield a tomato. So if you have hundreds or thousands of flowers in your garden and you take this toothbrush and do that to all of them and you see that pollen burst, you are almost certainly going to set fruit. It's important to note that while this method of hand pollination is extremely effective, it is not magic. Most varieties of tomatoes will only set fruit under certain temperature and humidity conditions. Tomato pollen begins to lose its viability when daytime temperatures exceed 90 degrees Fahrenheit or 32 degrees Celsius and nighttime temperatures exceed 70 degrees Fahrenheit or 21 degrees Celsius. If temperatures get hotter than that, most varieties of tomatoes become completely infertile. For tomato pollen to fertilize the flower, it needs to remain a dry powder. 
When temperatures get into that range I just stated, the tomato pollen becomes sticky and it can no longer coat the female parts of the flower. This phenomenon is most common in the deep south and the southeast where dew points become very high and it does not cool down out of the 70s at night. Where I live on the coast of southeastern North Carolina, most tomato varieties are completely infertile from mid-June to early September because our nights and days are far too warm and humid consistently, and the pollen clumps and turns into mud. All the vibrating of the flowers in the world will not work to set fruit under those conditions. If you live in an area of the country where dew points reach and maintain the mid to upper 60s and 70s Fahrenheit for days or weeks on end, which is 19 degrees Celsius or warmer, your tomatoes will struggle with infertility. Dry, arid climates will be more resistant to infertility caused by excessive heat because humidity causes the pollen clumping, so in dry climates, the pollen will remain viable longer. There are some exceptions to that rule. Most cherry tomatoes and small type tomatoes that are two to three ounces or smaller will set fruit in conditions I outlined above, but the large slicers and beefsteaks most of us love will not pollinate under those conditions. A stray tomato here or there may set, but you won't get any significant production. Luckily, for those of you in the Northeast, Midwest, Upper Midwest, West, and West Coast, you generally don't have to worry about this phenomenon. This is something that we in the humid South, particularly the coastal South, have to deal with. If you're in a wet, humid summer climate with chronic, oppressive humidity like I am, make sure you grow cherry tomatoes, small two-ounce salad tomatoes, and small plums like San Marzano along with your beefsteaks, so you will have some kind of tomato plants that will still produce when the larger varieties fail during summer. So all you have to do is just take your electric toothbrush and simply go around your garden, find all of the flowers, and vibrate them. And I promise you, you will have more fruit set than you've ever had before using any other method. It really is an incredible method, and you will see more tomatoes than you know what to do with. Everyone, thank you so much for watching today's video. If you found it helpful, please hit that like button. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please subscribe for future updates and more videos like these. If you're curious about anything that I use in my garden, everything that I use is linked in my Amazon storefront in the video description. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see all of you again on the next video.